Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro. Today, I'm here to inspire. I'm here to inspire you by sharing five photographers that will definitely motivate you to go out and shoot. Later, I'll be getting into some photo submitted reviews submitted by my viewers like you. All you need to do is join my Discord if you'd like to submit your photos. I do photo submissions during the Ask a Photo Pro episodes Tuesday, Thursday, and as well, I make myself available for you, the emerging photographer, to ask me anything photo related. If you have any questions related to photography, please, now's the time to hit me up. Welcome everybody who is tuning in live. Thank you. If you're watching after the fact, Thank you as well. I do appreciate comments for people who watch my podcast afterwards. So please make sure you say hi in the comments and let me know what during today's episode helped you the most. All right. Hope you guys are ready for a little bit of what we like to call this week's inspiration. With our first photographer that we are diving into, her name is Maria Luisa Mila Moreno. Now, this photographer I found on Behance, and I just love the way that she shoots with such a shallow depth of field. She gets incredibly close to her subjects, and she's able to create what I call almost a dream state feeling with her photography. Look at how incredible this work looks. I'm very, very impressed by her color tones. And again, the way that she uses depth of field in order to remove the distractions from the background. The sharpness is absolutely incredible. And this is a Behance award-winning photography project. So I thought, what a great place to start off. As far as macro photography, as far as making photographs that you could essentially make in your backyard, but shot in such a way that is artful, shot in such a way that is beautiful, and creating a body of work that would make people want to print them and put the work on their wall. Let's get a little bit into Maria Luisa's other projects. If you just have a scan of her portfolio, and I have looked at this photographer's work before, I do believe it was this first story, which was, I do believe, the first time she had ever won a Behance Award that caught my eye the first time. And again, as far as a macro shooter, as far as someone who creates almost a dreamlike state with her photography, again, getting in super close and maintaining that same visual signature, that same style throughout her, her photography, I just think is really, is smart money super super great and inspiring photography inspiring that is maria luisa milo marina mila marino <laughs> it's a hard name to say but her photography is absolutely absolutely fantastic and i'd like to share with you this last story from her, this one's called Living Life from Dream to Dream. At some, point in, at some point in life, the world's beauty becomes enough. You don't need to photograph, to paint, or even remember it. It is enough. So she shoots with a Canon 80D and a 100 millimeter macro. So again, it's not even super high and equipment it should be super inspiring for you to see that she's shooting this with you know a body from 10 years ago the photography is excellent i hope you agree really really pretty all right let's get into our next photographer this next shooter i think it's it's a great uh, bridge because the photographers I'm choosing to show you today are all different and they all have something incredibly different to offer. This next photographer I have shown before. 
This photographer's name is Bade Fuwa. Bade Fuwa. And this photographer's ideas, the use of double exposure, the use of Photoshop, the use of composites, post-processing, creates almost a dreamlike feeling. This is the work of Bade Fuwa. I really enjoy the concepts, the, the amount of appreciations and love that this photographer gets on this profile. And oftentimes it's himself in the photography. Let's look at some other projects from Bade Fuwa. You can see this photographer also has the ability to shoot fashion, has the ability to shoot commercial work. And when you look at editorial work, there's definitely a style. There's definitely a feeling. I just really appreciate the aesthetic of how this photographer shoots, how this photographer sees. Again, the photography that I'm showing you things will gravitate towards you and you'll gravitate towards some photographers more than others. Look at that. That's just, I think, absolutely spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. I really love the sensibility. This photographer is from Nigeria. So this is all Nigerian location and editorial photography, which is great to look at editorial photography from other countries, other places. That's my number one recommendation. If you're trying to shoot for magazines in your region, in your market, look at magazines not from your region, not from your market. You'll create the kind of work that is very desirable in your market, but it won't look like you're from there. Really great work. This is the work of Bade Fuwa. I love the experimentation. I love just how his work appears quite free. Like he shoots in a very free way that is empowering. I'm going to show you one last story from Bade Fuwa. This is called A Search for Mother. And conceptual, idea-driven, story-based photography, which I think is very incredible. Very incredible. The ideas should inspire the work of Bade Fuwa. Let's look at another. This photographer is going to blow you away. This photographer is the photographer that I used the thumbnail of today's episode. Her name is Shelby Hansen. And Shelby, CML Hansen, makes incredible, incredible still lifes of flowers specifically. Her niche is beautiful and the work that she creates using motion, using motion blur with her photography is just, I think, absolutely spectacular. I hope you guys agree. Do leave a comment if you're feeling the work of Shelby Hansen. I think she's fantastic. Absolutely epic work. Epic. Oops. Epic work. Oh, look at this color palette. The color palette's brilliant. Do let me know if you agree with the color palette of this work and this photographer. I think she's excellent. It looks like paintings, yes? It looks like paintings. And the thing that's beautiful is all of her photography has the same visual signature. So I think that she's just brilliant. Brilliant. Another award-winning shooter. 
that I've found from Behance. That is today's thumbnail that you are looking at right now. We'll give you a nice, beautiful look at this fantastic image. I love the motion on the edges. So great. Details. Shelby Hanlon. Let's look at some other work from Shelby Hanlon. Look at her portfolio. Tell me it doesn't look like all of her photographs look like hers with the exception of her photo illustration. But she has such a great sensibility and you can see how through experimentation, her flower photography has evolved. You can see that she has a great desire to make printable, sellable images. And as you look through you can see how she's continually evolving her art. She calls herself an environmental artist and photographer. And if you look at her website, this should be very inspiring. Her website is Adobe Stock. And she links her Behance to all of her Adobe Stock contributions. And Behance and how Behance and Adobe are obviously Adobe owns Behance. So the integrations, they've just opened up Adobe stock where you can make your Behance projects part of Adobe stock instantly and start making your making money from your photography tomorrow. So this is the work of Shelby Hanlon. And I hope it inspires you to start pushing your photography into the stock realm, especially if you shoot places or if you shoot things. If you shoot people, if it's model released, you can definitely push it into Adobe stock as well. That is the work of Shelby Hanlon. And I hope Shelby has inspired like I I was very excited to see how this photographer who basically shoots flowers only manages to make a living creating art and I think that that's absolutely fantastic all right we have two more shooters this first photographer his name is Daryl Rea and Daryl Rea this is the photography that just blew me away. It's called Palouse Dreams. It's spring in eastern Washington, which brings misty dreams of rolling wheat. This is photography by Daryl Rea. Look at these photographs. For me, this photography stopped me dead. Now, you tell me if I'm wrong in saying that this photography stopped me dead, I was absolutely blown away when I saw this story. Do let me know if you feel it because I think that this shooter is absolutely magic and this story just grabbed me and stopped me dead. I hope you agree, oops. Welcome everybody who's tuning in live. I'm appreciating you all for doing so. Oh my goodness, look at the light. Look at the light, just gorgeous. We are looking at the work of Daryl Rea. Let me hide my camera so you can get the full effect. Beautiful, beautiful minimalist, beautiful contrast, well shot, well done photography. Do let me know if you agree. Powerful. Powerful. Really, really strong. The work of Daryl Rea. 
I will show you some of his other projects because this shooter, he says here on Behance, I'm sharing my personal explorations in photography, art, and illustration. This is a non-commercial and my source of Zen and play. I hope you find inspiration in the work. So I, I, I think some of this is digital art. This looks very much like digital art. I'm most interested in his photography. I'm most interested in the photography. This was the story we just looked at and he wins awards for his pictures. This is another story that I might have, may have shown before, but I think if it loads, <laughs> here we go. Wow, wow. Do let me know your thoughts. Today's episode we call Photographers from the Internet as part of this week's inspiration series that I've been doing for two years. I'm always trying to inspire, always trying to help you guys see photography in a new way and share photographers with you that you've never seen before that are doing unique things with the camera. Wow, great texture, great texture. Great color. Comments appreciated. Every week I try to select amazing photographers to share with you that you may not have seen before, that you likely have not seen before. And I hope it inspires you the way that it's my intention to do. Let's look at one last photographer. This shooter, Sanket Kuntale. Sanket Kuntale. Sanket Kuntale is a Indian photographer from Mumbai and Sanket has transformed his career in India from being a what I would call a capable people shooter to a very um, well well done product shooter. This is Sanket's portrait photography, a little over retouchy, a little dreamy. I definitely see it, but you can see early on how this photographer was trying to find his way as far as getting work as a working photographer. And somewhere in here, this shooter started to shoot food and drink. And you can see how the work, the quality, and the ideas started to progress. I mean, this is very simple commercial work, but getting into ideas like this, which starts to get so much more complicated as far as the executions, you can see how this photographer now has really started to get their stride and 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 he's sharing how he's getting better at the craft of product photography through this Behance profile and it's actually quite great to have a look through to see how uh, it's not it's not hard to dive into a new realm of work you just have to do it and keep doing it and shoot after shoot after shoot it's possible and seeing how most of this work is so idea based so light based so photography based it's the stuff that you can handle not every project you're going to blow be blown away by not every one of this photographer's projects you're going to be blown away by but what it's to show is inspiration of a photographer moving into a new genre of specialization, a new genre of niche, and how practice, practice, practice makes it so you can end up getting some really, really high quality images. So if you look at his most, most recent stories, 
this was one that has now won a Behance Award. His most recent stories are incredibly creative. A great use of seamless paper, really great use of paper, really great reflection, liquid, drip, like, again, really great use of paper. Great light. So you can see how the ideas develop and this shooter just gets more creative and more creative and more creative and and technically better what seems every shoot so this is to inspire this is to show you all the crazy things that you can do this photographer sh partially shredded a seamless and made strips and shone light through like i just think it's brilliant that my friends is this week's inspiration that was five photographers to amp you up to make you excited about photography to help you see your photography i think in a new light i hope you guys enjoy these type of inspirational episodes i'm always trying to look at photography that makes me want to shoot i always want to look at photographs that make me want to share and we're now transitioning into the sharing part of the episode with everybody's favorite part which we call real photo reviews if you'd like your photos reviewed you have to join the discord the discord is the place that i started two years ago it's the largest growing photography community in the internet according to no stats and basically just me only if you want your photos reviewed join the discord the description that you're looking at for the video that you're watching the discord link is right there as well as all kinds of other helpful links all right this week i gave you a challenge that challenge was this photograph something that fits into your portfolio and make one two three portfolio images that fit into your portfolio that fill a content gap meaning you should know your work you should know what you shoot well and have lots of you should know what you shoot well and don't have that much of that need to fill that content gap. So this week's assignment was filling content gaps in your portfolio. And I asked for three photos. That assignment I gave, when did I give that assignment? I think I gave that assignment uh, last week, Thursday. So today is the beginning of me looking at these assignments. I will look at them for a while but starting sunday coming i'll be giving you your next assignment for the week so we're going to be looking at some assignments as well as just catching up with what you guys got going on here in our discord let's look at our first assignment from josh turtle <laughs> mccoy josh says this video was about five hours of work then he submitted another video that he said, I made this in about three hours. So let's get it on. We are looking at Josh's first video, which is from a YouTube video. It is 45 seconds. And I've encouraged Josh to shoot this. I've encouraged Josh. Josh is part of my mentorship program. He is was missing an incredible... Um, uh, work opportunity by adding video into his into his portfolio into his services he was primarily focusing on drone photography I wanted him to add drone video and take it really seriously this is his first offering <laughs>
Okay, Turtle, first video. Really, the music is a little high in volume. So I would drop, whenever you're adding music to a project, you need to drop the music down to the, like probably minus 10, minus 15 decibels because the music is a little bit loud. Um, so I had to drop my volume. That's the first thing. The next thing is you need to have a beginning, middle, and end because you shot footage, um, which is great. What would help is a voiceover. So I'm going to show you an example. And again, it shouldn't feel like you're reading. It should feel quite natural. I'm going to play this back. You can hear now how loud the volume is. And I'm going to drop the volume to where I think that it should be. And I'm going to show you how to make this because this is a promo for your business and it's showing other custom, other potential customers um, in the real estate industry, in the home building industry, what you can do for them. Watch. Hi, I'm Turtle. I fly drones. I can make training material for your company. Are you a home builder? Do you make tiles for roofs? Insulation? Do you build scaffolding? If you're a roofer, I can show progress updates weekly with my drone. If you install tiles, I can show you how the progress is happening with your build. If you're trying to get to the next level with your marketing materials, consider using a drone flyover for that. From marketing materials to outward reach, uh, you see what I'm saying? This is why I'm saying there's no, there's no end. It just, you know what I mean? So basically the idea is to have a way that you sum up everything, have a way that at the end, you're like, if whether you're a builder, a contractor, a roofer, or in the business of marketing companies like this, let Turtle Drone Solutions be your go-to for all your aerial needs. Like there has to be that call to action. The abrupt end feels like <laughs> you know what I mean? But you are like right there. We just need a voiceover. There, there has to be some sort of a voiceover to just anchor, to tell people what they're watching. You know, it could be the beginning is a drone for taking off. And it's like, I'm Turtle and I fly drones. Or I'm Josh McCoy and I fly drones. And it doesn't even have to show you, it can just show the drone. And then some flyover B-roll and then zoom in now to this specific real estate. The next one, hi, I'm Turtle, I fly drones. And then the drone taking off and then cut into commercial real estate, come it into photogrammetry, mapping, and all that stuff. So you can use that same intro of the drone flight, like, and you now have to have an ending. You have to have an ending solution where it's a call to action, how they reach you, how they contact you, look at my website, blah, 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 blah. You're doing commercial, but there's no call to action at the end. So let's look at the second one. That helps though. I know, I know that that's gonna help you, Josh, because you can see like, you're truly listening when it comes to this mentorship program and every single thing I tell you to do, you like race out and do it, which I appreciate. Um, when it comes to video, more mapping. I love this opening. Josh, you're, you're, you're getting it. You're getting it. Look at this one, guys.
Yeah, closer, closer. It's very closer. Um, I think the end graphic is smart, but there's no call to action. I also think the purple against the gray um, is a little distracting. Um, the purple against the gray is, it's like, it's hard to read. You can see it's hard to read. There needs to be contrast, meaning contrast, <laughs> meaning the background's white against this that they're they're too close in value and although it tells people to go to your website it's not like t like you need more information you're making someone watch for 45 seconds you're giving them beautiful visuals but you're making them imagine what they could use you for where you can layer on top of that voiceover or captions that just hit the footage here and the footage from the first video i could help you or i would take both of those videos and smash them together and make one 45 second video they're both a little bit repetitive so you could split the footage and still get one 45 second trailer but the text in the first video, the placement of the text is too high in the frame. The font design, like I think some design help, like visual design help would help you make this even more of like a punch. The second music, better than the first music. I also pulled the volume of the music way down so it would be a bit gentler for the viewers. Um, Turtle, you're on your way. You're, you're, you're on your way. There's just your videos will keep getting better every single time you make them. So good look. Two very, very great, like great attempts. You're missing a voiceover and um, thinking of a beginning, middle, and an end. Right now you're creating footage, um, but you're not wrapping it up. So that's my only two cents. Very proud of you. I'm very happy that you're diving into the world of making videos. Good for you, Turtle. Let's get into our next. Devon Shu says he just got a medium format GFX. He is apparently abandoning Canon for the 100 megapixel Fuji GFX. Good deal. Can't wait to see what our man Devonshu does with this camera. Good shit. Not really a review, more like news. <laughs> All right. Julie says more product photography 6D, 100 macro, two Ellen Chrome strobes. Let's go. Julie with some new product photography. First up. Julie, really great looking, really great looking, good, good, clean photography. You can see, you don't see any background. You don't see any edge of the photograph, which is really strong. Meaning if I pull this photograph, like this is great. There's no border. It's hella sharp, which is really great. I'm not sure if you're shooting with a tripod. I'm telling you this would be even sharper if you aren't shooting with a tripod keeps your lines hyper straight i like the reflections um i like the reflections i think the exposure is just a touch hot meaning this could be a bit more gold and up here could be a little bit more gold so again the reflector that's kicking in here it looks like you have some sort of a white reflector you could move that reflector back just a little bit which would make um which would make it a little cleaner. Uh, I like it though, Julie, this is very good. And also it would make this red a little bit more saturated. Um, I would try minus a third of a stop. Just in, in the processing, I'm being, even doing that with this existing picture, just see what it looks like at minus a third um, for me. <laughs> let's look at julie's next photo julie very good i know that um 
If you guys don't know Julie, Julie is an incredible portrait shooter. She's a great fashion photographer. She is endeavoring into adding products to the work that she does. New work from Julie. Another banger. Something going on with the tip up here, just the tip. It looks like you may have done a little bit of retouching here, Julie. So I do see how this edge is a little bit strange with like some hits here. Uh, I only, because I'm looking at it at max size, this cutout, this detail, super, super great. There's, you know, a little blip here that you could fix. Um, but Julie, it, very, very, very good. Small thing here that you could fix. Small thing here, which might be a mistake. Um, I, I'm impressed, Julie. Really strong, really strong. Really, really good. And you can see here, better saturation than here. I feel like the saturation here versus here. Um, it might look the same to you on my monitor. It's a bit more red here. So that's what I'm trying to match. Good job, Julie. Let's look at another. Let's look at another. Duh, duh, duh. Okay, Julie, really smart. Really smart. I like how you're showing the front of one and the ass of the other. That's really clever. Um, this would make a great horizontal photo, um, meaning... Imagine if it was cropped like uh, this. I like that as an idea, filling up the entire frame because there's so much really wasted space up here and on the bottom. Like there's nothing really happening up here and down here. So seeing this as a horizontal makes sense to me seeing it cropped like that i i like it's an amazing shot great saturation here julie great saturation good cleanup on the surface um this line's a little crooked compared to that i mean i'm being i'm i'm truly splitting hairs if you look at that angle here versus this angle here um i I think tripod is is my next thing is I would say shoot these photos even slower because you're so good. You're so good at it, Julie. Um, you really have something going on here. If you slow down even more, you'll you'll be even more detail oriented. Okay, one more for Julie. There's four more from Julie, which is awesome. Look at this. This is another that could be a vertical i mean this is a vertical this is another one that could be a horizontal picture for me this could be cropped like this um you can see as a vertical definitely works something going on with the tip again i'm not sure what's happening up there i'm really imagining that this tip up here is at the same at that same sharpness that we have here i'm imagining that we're going to get like up here should be at that same sharpness so i'm not sure if you can use the pen tool to fill this to blend this and to make this area not look washy um again it's just thoughts julie i'm not sure what the case is but I am loving the fact that you're putting so much effort into this type of photography because it's serving you well. It really is. Wow. Okay. Officially the best picture of the day. I really love this, Julie. This is fantastic. Like really, really fantastic. Like I like it a lot. I want you to see how great this is. Super, super clean. Super clean. You can see now, Julie, if you were able to get product, like I have a feeling what happened with this lipstick is when you opened this lipstick, there was like the tip was kind of messed. 
<laughs> so I imagine I agree. You can do command H Q C. I will show you, Gregory. We have um we have special powers. If you do this, it does this. All right. So I'm proud of you, Julie. I think the next time that you shoot, um, I think the next time that you shoot, if you can be, um, if you can open the lipstick and just make sure you have like perfect product, I think you'll be so, so, so happy because clearly you can shoot this. You shoot this so well and it looks like advertising like you're you're getting it and i'm liking the way that you're using white and keeping the backgrounds like super clean super strong jules you should be really happy this is a great frame great frame great reflection you know there's small things in the reflection that you could clean up a couple of scratches there a little thing here on the edge obviously this edge here you could clean up um I think the more expensive products you get, the better your photography is going to be. It takes some it takes some investment, but it'll pay off because you'll get paid to do this type of work, I believe. Honestly, you're really good at it. Good shit. Let's look at another from the one they call Julie Lagovska. This is another favorite Julie. I really like this top down angle. I really do. I really like this angle. Seeing the L'Oreal here. Yes, it's upside down. I think this whole picture should be rotated. Um, I think this photo should be rotated um, 180 degrees. So the angles go like this and like this. And then this L'Oreal would be here and legible. Um, you can do this with the exact same photo just by flipping it. Also, if you look here, Jules, at the 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 tip looks so much perfect, more perfecter here. You see how this, the way it's blended, although there is some things here and some things here and some things here, it's like the best tip so far. So I, 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 uh, great photography, really good, really good. Should be thrilled, Julie. Um, this, this could be your calling. Like this could be the thing that you add to your body of work is cosmetics. And then the wet lipstick. Again, we talked last episode about how I feel about wet lipstick. I don't think that the wet lipstick works as well as the dry. I prefer it dry. Um, but look at the color that you've achieved here. This is the color that I'm begging for. Look at this, how great this is. And then if we look at other, if we look at other photos, Julie, do you see how it doesn't have that same, that same color? Like, look at this, you see this color, right? So that's what we're trying to achieve. You have it in here, but we don't have it in so many of these photos. We don't have that hyper saturated color. Like I need this to have color like this. Um, but again, proud. You are definitely rocking it, Julie. Great, great, great shots. Casper Hillman, also known as Original Exotic has said this, still working on these, but we are very happy with how these turned out already. I'm cooking for a portfolio redo. Original shoots cars incredibly well, Casper. He's adding people photography to his work. He's adding that and bringing that back to his core, which is really, really great. First picture from Casper. Let's go Casper. I like the leading line. It's clever. The leading lines here going up and leading you to her. She's relatively center focused. Um, 
much like when we're shooting for magazines, we have to remember that this is the gutter. This is two pages in a magazine and it's dropping subjects dead center is what we do when we shoot vertical. So this picture, the girl is vertical. You can see the most important things in this frame exist um, here. Oops between here and here. So you know you can make a vertical out of this and still have the leading line, as you can see. Um, and it becomes a magazine cover because really the most important thing is like people are vertical. When we shoot horizontal, when we're shooting people, we have to be hyper aware of horizontal composition, which is magazine composition, which means you can't drop people dead center. Um, again, you can, but it definitely makes it much more limited when it comes to how your work gets laid out in a magazine. All of these four photos are great, but there's definitely Oh, this is much better with the vertical composition. You can see this now as a vertical, how it can work as a cover. It also, you've given it extra headspace in case now, because this is an eight by 12, but an eight by 10 exists like right here. So you still have an eight by 10 and you still have room. I love her being in motion, like that's a cool swag. I want you to make sure that you're getting, oops, that you're getting really tight focus. I'm seeing a little bit of Lucy Lucy with the focus. When you're shooting people, you have to be conscious of shutter speed versus what lens you're shooting with and make sure you're not getting into camera shake because if this is a 100 millimeter lens that you're shooting with, then you have to shoot one over a hundred in order to have no camera shake. If this is an 85, you got to shoot at an 85th of a second in order to not have camera shake. Small things, but um, just be hyper aware. Also elbow, I would love to see her have both her hands in her pockets with the same attitude. Um, the more you shoot people, the more you direct them, the more you're going to get amazing. The location is amazing. Amazing. Also, he said with the speed booster, some of them were actually 1.4. 1.4 is an unacceptable aperture to shoot full length. You just won't nail the focus. You won't. Um, I, it's the difference between in focus, out of focus in focus out of focus. it's such a slight narrow slit that it works when you're hyper up close to somebody for a picture and they're like filling the frame and it's like these eyes are in focus but the ears are out of focus but having somebody you know moving and like doing that and thinking that you're gonna nail focus it's just not going to happen. You can get the same look and feel aperture wise um, at like F4, F2.8. It's still going to be like that same feeling, but your client's going to be in focus. And if you think about shooting for clients and if you think about shooting product for magazines, like editorially, though that focus is going to be like super, super, super critical. So these are things to practice when you're submitting for me. The pose for me is a little odd in this one. She feels like she's falling over a little bit. And this one now, Casper, she's actually too, um, let me change to a line, but she's actually too in the center of the entire frame. Like we have focus points that go from center and uh, also go up this way and up this way, up this way and down this way. Choose a focusing point that's higher and then bring her so she's higher up. This is 
uh, like you're just you're giving us a square of a photo and although i know architecturally you're trying to keep this in the frame it's not interesting al enough the lines aren't straight enough the clock is distracting it starts to take you away from what we're doing actually here and her turning her face so far away you need to correct her and turn her face back to camera her chin's too far up for the angle that you're aiming so you're aiming too much under her chin and up her nose um where you know like this is why girls shoot photos like up here because it gives a stronger jawline so you have to kind of work on how you're hitting her and try not to like aim low what you're trying to do here is take a photo of the background and her at the same time and you're taking a photo of her with the first picture that you submitted um, this picture she's way closer in the frame so it's way more about her and also she's bending forward to you so she's projecting to you you know so this picture as a vertical it's a photo that works this picture even better she's filled the frame the background is complementary the light it's so warm and lovely and beautiful and it's like it's also diffusing her and the sunlight that's coming through her hair all of this is like just working but the 1.4 uh-uh <laughs> Don't, don't shoot at 1.4. The fact that the lens can shoot at that, I have a 1.2. I never shoot anywhere close to that. It's just, there's no tolerance for focus point. There's just none. So um, shoot at like, I the, the rule of thumb for the sharpest aperture, it's two and a half times closed from wide open. So if your lens goes 1.4, it's 1.4, Roughly, this is around like 2.8, 2.5 is going to be your sharpest or even two, eight and a half. So this for me so far is favorite photo. And then you can see here, we're almost like you're trying to take two pictures. The background buildings is a photo and then she's a photo and you're trying to like make them work together. You're no longer thinking about making a great picture of her. You're shooting her in front of these buildings and it's like... Who cares about a picture of her in front of this building? <laughs> you want a picture of her. So, yeah, unless you're being hired by the building to shoot that kind of stuff. Um, this one, way better, way better. The body language is better. The head angle, the light is hitting her face really nice. A um, little bit, I, again, her head is, it, with, with an 8x10, this is still here which works, you have good headspace and it still works as a cover, like it's strong. Um, this is bordering on my favorite. I just want to see you not crouched down and aiming up at her. I want you to see standing and aiming at like her level, just again to try and also eye contact. Eye contact with photography is what just, that's why this photo is so magic it's eye contact do you know what i mean that's what we need and that and when we're shooting people looking away it's you're trying to grab the viewer how we grab the viewer is by the the, the subject um looking directly at you that's how we grab and this is exactly what you did here this is exactly what you did here which is you're grabbing, but she's still kind of like half looking. She's got such a pretty face. She should be able to look straight on. And then you can control her head angle. So you're able to give like more of a, a strong jawline because you're aiming up in an overcast day. There's no real jawline from this angle. So it's about trying to control her head angle and trying to not crouch down when you're shooting people because then you're aiming up and that just creates a whole bunch more problems. So Casper, great job. I'm happy that you're adding 
people back into your photography. This one is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I would say this one, body language dynamic, is, is also a super strong photo. Um, this one for me is a bit of a miss because she's leaning back and pushing her stomach forward. It's not flattering and her head's at too much of an angle. Um, this is again, one of the best ones would love her elbow down both her hands at the pockets and get her to look at the camera. She seems to always want to be like, and you know what I mean? Just get her to like, it, it's up to you as the shooter to control your subject. Don't let them just do whatever. And you're just like, great, great, great. No, direct them. Cause if not, then after the fact, you're searching for what you can use rather than only shooting photos that you actually know work already. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing more videos showing how I direct subjects and control the shoot. <laughs> so you get the most photography out of a session, the most usable photos, the most sellable prints. That's the goal. All right, guys, let's see if there is any other photography. It seems like Casper is just dropping shots every minute. I like this idea. I like this um, look. This is another one of your best locations and really strong light. But again, if you look at the focus, Casper, look at how off the focus is. This is like that is your 100%. And you can see her rings are a little bit more in focus than her face is. But overall, like it's not in focus. And it looks great here. But if you're shooting a, a picture at this distance of it, you cannot shoot 1.2, 1.4, 1.8. Like it starts at like 2A and on. Like it just, and also when you shoot, check your frames, check your frames, every frame, like, especially if focus is on the edge, you can even see there's like a slight motion blur in the back, like this kind of stuff. Like when you're shooting people, you can't recreate this stuff. So you have to make sure technically under scrutiny because the pose, the shoes, the light, everything, the tree, the wall, everything's great. But when it falls apart, when we look at, at, at close up, you know what I mean? You know, like if it was car photography, the same, it's the same thing. You want to see those super tack sharp lines. I want you to be ultra disciplined with your focus and also control like control your subject don't let them go hyper hyper crazy i'm happy that you're shooting people again it brings me great joy and casper this is the closest pose wise the only thing i would ask is that you're not looking up at her and now you can see the building is the building it's going through her head, this line, it's like it, all of this actually becomes distracting. I love the like haze that you have going on here, but this vibe, you can take this same girl with the same pose and the same everything and just put her somewhere else. So she's not competing with this building behind. So she's not fighting and you're not worrying about lines and stuff that's why her in front of the tree just works so much better because this block of window growing out of her head is like the first thing that i see um you have to look beyond the person you have to scan the frame i also see that the lines are crooked you know what i mean like these kinds of things like that's now where my eye is fighting between both of them. I'm watching how the windows line up up here. I'm seeing how this line is kind of crooked. I'm seeing like there's just so many places for you to go other than her. And this is the place that you want her, you to go first. Look at when I crop this in a little bit tighter and move and make her a little bit more predominant in the frame still fighting with the background and also focus um let's just look at 
perfect focus here. Still, it's a little, little, little soft. And where you're aiming to focus when you're shooting people is between the white and the color of the eye. You're looking right here or you're focusing on those eyelashes. That's where you're looking. If you have eye tracking, the eye, it will catch that. If you don't have eye tracking, that's the place that you're aiming. And also you lock focus, you got to recompose and shoot. And when you're doing that with such a wide aperture, even that recomposing, you're shooting out of focus pictures. So I hope that helps Casper. Everybody else who's watching today, thank you. That is some real photo re 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 reviews. We do this um, at least once a week, sometimes twice. It really depends on how many photography submissions that we get, but we do not do photo reviews during any of the behind the picture episodes anymore. I'm trying to make that just photography inspiration, topical shows, talking to me, asking me, asking me questions that happens all during these episodes. So please, um, take advantage when I ask, if you guys have anything to ask me, do it. Because right now we're at the end of the episode. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. It is time to take a sip. It is time to end off. It is time to sign off. It's time to remind you, you can join the Discord if you want me to review your photos on the next round. It's time to remind you that this week's episode is filling content gaps within your portfolio. Make one, two, three photos that fill a gap within your existing portfolio giving shout outs to everybody who submitted today josh for making that video i hope all my tips helped everybody who watched know that you get better every single time you look through that camera the hardest thing is showing up i got you guys if you need any help you can join the mentorship program i got one spot left ish and um lots of new inspiration coming later in the week we'll see you guys on thursday Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Make sure you watch this video next.